Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 in Damien Ben. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, let's have your kids take their nap, let's have you cook breakfast, let's have you cook dinner, let's have you cook whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover this week, uh, but I do have to say I absolutely loved absolutely loved reading uh, all of your guys' feedback, all of your thoughts on the topics that we discussed last week, but also finding out what you guys do when you watch my videos. I thought it was awesome. Some of you guys watch on Monday, some of you guys watch on Friday, and it's all over the week, but regardless, I thank you most sincerely from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be a part of your life. So thank you so much, and I absolutely loved it. I think there was a total of like 650 comments or something like that. So I was trying to respond to them as quickly as I could uh, because I'm not the best when it comes to some of my other videos, but with Minx Monday, I'm always just like, no, no, no. You know, I love the connection that we have uh, on the comment section. All right, so let's get into the very first question, shall we? From Mary Townsend. What do you think about the price points for Louis Vuitton leather bags? It seems that most of the luxury collections I see on YouTube have more Louis Vuitton canvas, but their bags, but their leather bags are from other fashion houses. An example would be the Speedy B30 in canvas versus the Emprunt leather. This is a fabulous, fabulous question, and I briefly talked about it on my luxury wish list, you know, because I've said before that I love Louis Vuitton, and for me, I always think of their canvas versus their leather handbags, and I can only speak for myself, um, but as far as why I end up leaning more towards canvas versus their leather bags and how I feel about their price points, I do feel that some of their price points are a little bit, um, they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit higher up there uh, compared to some of, some of the other fashion houses. But then when you have a Louis Vuitton leather bag and a Chanel leather bag, I mean, you have thousands of dollars between them. You know, that's, that's a huge difference. Uh, so for me personally, I feel that Louis Vuitton had, you know, started with canvas. They have perfected canvas. In my opinion, um, I know that there's other fashion houses out there that might have coated canvas, but to me, Louis Vuitton will always be the one that, um, that if I need something in the canvas, I immediately go to them, you know, before anyone else. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, they started with canvas and it wasn't until 1985, I believe, that they introduced their first um, leather line, which is the Epi line for handbags uh, versus, uh, for example, Chanel that started in 1955 with leather bags. And most other fashion houses started with their leather handbags uh, and their classics are leather. So most of Louis Vuitton's classics are uh, are canvas, and that's you know that's kind of how I that's kind of how I see it. Uh, but by no means am I trying to discredit them or take away from the beauty of their leather bags. I think Louis Vuitton has amazing, amazing leather bags, but it sometimes holds me back from going for their leather because some of the other fashion houses are more so known for their leather bags versus uh, versus Louis Vuitton. So that's kind of what goes on through my mind. Uh, but for example, if Chanel came out with a coated canvas handbag, a coated canvas, right, similar to, to Louis Vuitton, I wouldn't be as attracted to it if, you know, because for me, I'm like, no, I'd rather, I'd rather go for leather with, with Chanel. I don't want to go for coated canvas. To me, Louis Vuitton perfected canvas, and they do it very, very well. So that's who I tend to go for for that. So I don't know, you know, but like I said, they have beautiful leather handbags, uh, and it's all personal preference, but... They have been known for the canvas. They, I mean, they've they've been doing they've been doing canvas for since the very 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 beginning, and they've been doing it for a very long time. So to me, it's just I don't know. It adds to the history of it. It adds to the beauty of the item uh, that I'm incorporating all of that into the piece versus going for their leather bag because it might be a little bit newer to the fashion house versus uh, you know knowing how the canvas works with them and being a little bit apprehensive as to how the leather would end up working out over time or how it would wear or anything like that. But again, it's all personal preference. I think it's beautiful, but um, 
Louis Vuitton is just <laughs> makes my heart sing for canvas and other fashion houses make my heart sing for their leather. So hopefully that was able to help, but I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this topic. I think it is awesome and maybe get some insights as, as to what you guys feel about this, but great, great question. And um, yeah, so I think the price points are a little bit, uh, they're a little bit higher, but I still think they're beautiful nonetheless, but great question. Hopefully that was able to answer it. Next question from Marissa Rosado. How long do you hold onto a bag that you thought was a dream bag before you consider selling it? Do you go through a process like trying to consciously put it in, back into rotation before you consider selling it? This is an awesome question. And so far I have only sold one of my dream bags and that was the Louis Vuitton uh, Speedy 30 Multicolor Blanc. Um, I absolutely love that bag. That was the bag that fueled my fire, fueled my love for, uh, for Louis Vuitton and I had wanted it for as long as I can remember. So when the day came that I, that I had the opportunity to add it to my collection, I was over the moon. And I never once, I never once used the bag outside of my house. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I would, you know, set it on my, on my table or on my desk and I put items inside and I just, I couldn't do it. I was just so fixated on just having it sit on my shelf. Uh, so, you know, after, like I said, a year and a half, I think year and a half or two years is when I ended up selling it. And I just thought, no, this bag should be used. This bag should be loved and, you know, and, been, and be able to see the light of day and unfortunately I'm not the person for that but someone else was uh, but in general when it comes to um, when it comes to selling something from my collection I do conscientiously use it uh, for a certain amount of time and I really get to pinpoint why it doesn't work out for me there have been times that you know, I'm, I'm kind of set on possibly getting rid of something and then I go to use it. I'm like, oh, I really like it. You know, it kind of, uh, it kind of fuels my love for the item all over again. But other times it just, it really makes those points even more noticeable, you know, like, oh, I can't stand the weight or I can't stand uh, the strap. It's always falling or this, that, or the other, you know, and it kind of solidifies my decision to, to get rid of the item. So, you know, I feel that just by giving it one last push, it's almost like closure for, for your collection. It's, it gives you closure for being able to get rid of the bag and that way you don't uh, experience seller's remorse either. Uh, so again, uh, so far just the one dream bag and yeah, I tried. I, I literally, I, I'm, I honestly tried to, <laughs> to use the bag, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it compared to any other bag in my collection. I just, Nope. <laughs> and I don't regret it either because the fact that I was able to acquire that bag was just amazing for me. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right. Next one from Lulu Loves Tuna. When you travel and buy yourself luxury items, do you also bring items for your family or just souvenirs? Do you feel guilty on not getting luxury items for your family too? Do you get judged for this? Uh, these are great questions. Uh, okay, so when so when I travel and I buy myself luxury goods, do I also bring items for my family or just souvenirs? I not only bring back souvenirs, but I also bring them gifts. And uh, whenever we get to a destination, um, we kind of set aside, uh, Robert and I, we kind of set aside a, uh, a day, okay, we're gonna get souvenirs, we're gonna get gifts this day, and we'll solely focus on that. It'll either be at the beginning of the trip or at the end of the trip. But I am always, always, always thinking about my family. And um, yeah, I try to, if they don't have the possibility to travel with us to wherever it is that we're visiting, I try to bring back as much as I possibly can so they can experience some of what we were able to experience. So uh, be it gifts and souvenirs, whatever it is. Now, when it comes to my immediate family, um, my parents aren't very big on uh, on luxury gifts by any means whatsoever. You guys know my mom is just like, not for me, you know, that's good that you like them, but not for me. And usually when we do bring them back gifts, uh, the first things out of my parents' mouths are, why did you spend money on us? We want you to have a good time. We want you to experience this and experience that. And of course, we never listen. I know I'm just like, nope, sorry. You know, if I have the possibility to be able to go somewhere and I want to bring you back something, I'm going to do that type of thing. So um, the only person in my family that, uh, that likes luxury gifts is my brother. So it makes it a lot easier, you know, to be able to just 
just uh, to bring him back items that are luxury. Uh, but in general, no, my family's always, their, their first priority is, did you have a good time? We want you to have a good time. That's what it's all about. And they're always just like, why did you bring my, why did you bring me back anything? You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have. I just want you to have a good time. Like I said, that is their top priority. And I just, I'm never going to listen. <laughs> never, never will I listen. Um, but no, as far as uh, do I get judged on it? I don't think so. We have such an open communication in my family that, um, you know, like I said, they're always just super supportive of, of being able to just say, hey, we want you to have a good time. And that's, that's all they care about. And uh, vice versa, whenever they travel anywhere, that's we don't expect gifts from each other um, in, in general. Uh, we don't, that's not how we are. You know, like if they go somewhere, I'm not like, what did you buy me? What did you buy me? What did you bring back or anything like that? So as far as judgment goes, I don't believe that's there. Like I said, we're very, very united. We're very, very, um, what's the word? Um, we're very honest and we're very open with one another. So yeah, <laughs> but, uh, that is a great question. Uh, all right. Next one from mini M. What are your thoughts on the new Louis Vuitton city melee? Do you think it's worth the price point? Uh, this is an awesome question and I do have a picture of the city melee MM, uh, and I will insert that right now. That bag comes in at $28.60 here in the States, and I think it's a very cool looking bag. It is pricey for my own personal taste because uh, even though it does have leather, it also has canvas. It actually has a little bit more canvas uh, than I would like for that price point, but I think it's a very cool looking bag nonetheless, especially because it's the reverse monogram. And when uh, reverse monogram first came out, I didn't really know what to think. At first, I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know, but. I just feel that when it's paired with the black leather, it just makes for a beautiful combination. I feel that they really complement each other. And this bag, um, I don't know, it's it's just kind of, it's very stylish, it's very edgy, it's very chic. It's not too in your face. I think it makes for a fabulous ad uh, addition to any collection. Uh, and it's also very versatile uh, because you have a detachable strap, it has the microfiber lining, uh, and I really like the silhouette that it has. So I'm a big fan, uh, a little too pricey for me, but I think that it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. And that reverse monogram, man, <laughs> with the black. Perfect, 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 perfect combination. Uh, but great, great question. Uh, all right, next one from Tasha Hartman. How do you feel about Fashion File layaway program? Should I be ridic ridiculed because I might I may not be able to afford to pay thousands of dollars up front, but instead I can purchase like new or sometimes new items by making payments? Not saying I don't ever purchase new, but sometimes I can find awesome deals saving me hundreds of dollars and still get the same quality bag. Uh, this is a fabulous question. And to be honest, I really don't see a difference between putting a bag on layaway or buying something on a credit card and making payments towards a credit card or anything like that. Um, I think, you know, especially if you can lock in a bag at a certain price and then make payments for it, um, I, I don't I don't think that's bad. And if someone's gonna ridicule you for that, that's ridiculous, that's so stupid. You know what I mean? Especially if you're looking for that specific bag uh, on the pre-loved market and it's a bag that maybe you've had your eye on for a couple of weeks or a couple months or even a couple of years and you're able to uh, to get it and then by locking it in and making payments towards it till it's yours. Absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And like I said before, it's no different than charging something onto a credit card and making payments or anything else that you make payments towards until it's yours. No, not at all. Uh, so great, great question. And hopefully that was able to help and definitely don't feel bad. And no, you shouldn't be ridiculed. And if someone has something to say, just pr brush it off and say, you know what? You do you, I do me, we move on, and I'm getting a fabulous bag. You're not. <laughs> uh, but great question. Uh, all right, next one from Diane Palminter. Don't you have a Chanel boy bag? If so, do you think it's as versatile with a classic, with with casual versus dressy outfits as the classic flap. I'm working on getting my first Chanel bag and I find the boy bag catching my eye more than other Chanel's. And like you, I'm more of a casual dresser. Uh, this is an awesome question. Uh, and personally for me, uh, I feel that the classic flap is a little bit more versatile because it's something that I can easily dress up and dress down because of the boy bag that I have. 
I personally think that it's all about personal preference and it's a matter of the combination that you go for. If you go for ruthenium hardware uh, and if you go for the uh, the distressed calfskin or the aged calfskin, um, I feel that looks a little bit more casual versus lambskin and say um, the, the shiny uh, gold hardware or the silver hardware just because I think it makes a little bit more of a difference. So if you go for those, I feel those are a little bit more versatile than going for uh, the ruthenium type of hardware. But again, it's all personal preference and uh, I know I've seen people that you know have little black dresses and they have they're rocking their La Boy bags with the ruthenium hardware so it's all a matter of what makes you feel comfortable but personally for me and my own uh, my own style if you will uh, I prefer uh, to see the um, I prefer to see the casual look with the ruthenium uh, type of uh, hardware for my boy bag or for boy bags in general uh, but either way uh, the boy bag is a beautiful bag and uh, hopefully you decide which one you want to add to your collection and good luck Next question from Laura Hills. I'm getting ready to pull the trigger and buy a classic Speedy in the size 30. I'm wondering if you have some thoughts about the two patterns from a strictly style viewpoint. Between the monogram and the Damia Ben, do you find that one pattern is more versatile in your wardrobe than the other? Does one work better with clothing patterns than the other? Does one work better with both casual and dressy clothes? Uh, this is an awesome question, uh, and I'm not the most stylish person on the planet, so <laughs> it might be a little bit different uh, for some of you guys out there. Uh, okay, so when it comes to Monogram and Damien Ben, do I find that one pattern is more versatile in my wardrobe than the other? For me, personally, I feel that they both end up working out uh, the same, only because I tend to stick to solid color tops, usually either black or white, and I tend to go for jeans, uh, denim jeans, so I feel that with that combination, I'm able to rock either uh, either print without necessarily having to clash uh, whatever it is that I'm wearing. Uh, so sometimes I know that people that uh, wear a lot of colors, they prefer the monogram. Uh, and sometimes I've seen people that don't want to pair the Damien Ben with black because they don't want to have black and brown together. So it's all a matter. And I know, of course, uh, monogram is, uh, is brown as well. But then when you have that caramel color, it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Uh, so that's just, um, that's just uh, food for thought. And then, okay, does one work better with clothing patterns than the other? Personally, I feel that if you wear a lot of prints, uh, I prefer the Damia Ben because it's not as loud. So if you're trying to focus on, like, let's say that your top is a certain type of print and you're trying to have all of the attention go onto your top, um, sometimes I feel that the monogram, because it's so loud, it sometimes clashes with that print. Uh, you know, that's why I said um, I prefer solid color tops, so I don't have, uh, I really don't have an issue with it but if I was to wear print um, I think I have two or three prints in my entire wardrobe that's a lie I actually probably have five or six <laughs> not too much because most of them are solid but when I do that I usually tend to stick to a black bag or the Damia Ben bag again because I feel that I, the monogram is just a little too loud for my own personal preference but it's all a matter of whatever makes you feel um, whatever you makes you feel more comfortable uh, does one work better with both casual and dressy clothes? Again, I feel that this is personal preference only because, you know, whenever um, in the past, for example, when I had my Eve clutches, I had one in monogram and I also had one in Damia Ben, I would strictly use the monogram when I was going out during the day when I was wearing something a little bit more casual. And sometimes I feel that the Damia Ben is also one that is a little bit more versatile, something that you can use if you're wearing uh, something a little bit more dressed up because it's not as in your face. It's not as loud. It's a little bit more inconspicuous versus the, the monogram. Uh, kind of takes away the attention from anything else that you're wearing. So if you're trying to, if you're going out, you know, on a date, if you're going out to dinner or out for the evening, I just really like the way that the Damia Ben looks because I feel it's just a little bit more dressed up than the monogram is. Uh, but again, it's all personal preference because I've seen a lot of people rock monogram uh, when they go out and about, you know, for evenings and it looks great as well. It's just a matter, again, of what makes me feel more comfortable whenever I do go out. I prefer either a black bag, um, you know, uh, in compared to uh, compared to uh, Demi Ben or Monogram. Uh, but if I had to pick between the two, it would definitely be the Demi Ben. So Demi Ben for the win for me, I feel is a lot more versatile. It goes with a little bit more versus the Monogram because it just tends to be a tad bit too loud at times. Uh, so hopefully that was able to help and congratulations on your soon to be classic Speedy. I'm super excited for you. And one more thing for the Demi Ben you got the red interior. <laughs> and you know how I feel about the red interior. I mean, it's the bag that I'm rocking today. <laughs> uh, so again, I don't know if that helps or not, uh, but good luck.
Next question from Luis Paulo Cortez. If you could create a new color combination for one of the canvas prints, what would it be? This is a fabulous question, and I've already thought about this for so many years. I even know I would call it the resort collection. Um, but it would honestly, it would work with either the monogram or the damier, uh, but it would be white and it would be gray. You would have gray as the background and uh, the white would be the lettering and it would be a light gray, you know, nothing too dark and the white wouldn't be like eggshell white or anything like that. Not as bright as like white out white, but it would be white. Uh, and I really like that combination, you know what I mean? Um, maybe it's because it's one of the, those are the two colors that I mostly have in my house. I don't know, I don't know, but I like that combination. And it would strictly be silver hardware because we all know that when it comes to Louis Vuitton, most of their items are, uh, are the brass or they have the gold hardware and it's beautiful, especially when you pair it with the black leather or the monogram, those rich, uh, the caramel and you have that brown. But I think with gray and white, it would have to be strictly silver hardware. And if it did have leather, it would have to be black leather. But that's what I that's what I would choose. But like I said, I thought about this for as long as I could remember. The resort collection they had something similar uh, that came out a few uh, a while ago. Actually, it was their denim um, their denim collection. It had a gray with a white lettering. Uh, but not that not that bright or not that dark of a of a gray you know it almost looks like it's charcoal but i want that light gray kind of like the chapman brothers um right the chapman brothers gray that they introduced like that but i think that when you have those two colors you know the lettering or even like what like i said before with the damier if you have some of the um some of the squares be gray and some of them be white and then the lettering be white i think it'd look awesome right now, if that, if that ever came out, <laughs> I don't even know what I would do. I would probably be like, wait, what? No way. <laughs> but I think that would be awesome. I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this. Is there a combination that you would love to see? If you could, if, if you were the creative director for, you know, for uh, the fashion house, if you wanted to make up your own uh, print, what would it be? I would love to hear your comments on the, sec or I would love to hear your thoughts on the comment section down below. Uh, but great, great question. Uh, all right, and the last question from Mia Mila Buggies. Hopefully I said that correctly. Do you ever think there will come a day where people like us won't want any more bags? This is an awesome question. This is kind of like what I talked about before with purse piece. Um, and maybe, maybe, you never know. Uh, and sometimes I feel that with handbags, I've, I've always been attracted to handbags for as long as I can remember since I was a kid. And even when I'm out and about, I always zero in on handbags. It doesn't matter the brand. It doesn't matter anything. I'm always just like, do, 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 do. Look at that bag. Look at that bag. You know, I'm like, they're all over my radar and I'm just checking them out. Uh, but sometimes, even though, like I said before, even though I love handbags, I'm just kind of like, nah, I don't really want to add any more. You know, I, I, I tend to go in slumps. Sometimes I'm just like, no more, I'm good. I don't see myself really getting anything else. Even if things are on my wish list, I don't necessarily see myself, you know, going out there and trying to get them. And then other times, I feel like all these new bags come out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? I'm just like, where did this come from? Oh my God, I have to have this bag. I love this bag, you know, and I, I tend to go crazy. So I don't know. That's why I say maybe, because like for me personally, it's like this, <laughs> you know, but for the most part, it tends to ride up on the high that, yeah, <laughs> I want to keep going for handbags. It's just a crazy, it's a crazy addiction, you know, not even an addiction. It's, it's, it, I don't know, it makes me happy, you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter on the brand either. I just love handbags. I appreciate handbags, the styles, the silhouettes, and um, just the form of expression that they mean when you're carrying them. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, as opposed to anything else that I've liked before, where I really, you know, I obsess about it, I love it, and then I fall out of love with handbags. They've been there since the beginning. <laughs> So who knows? Maybe. <laughs> I'll leave it at a maybe because it's 50-50. All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You had some amazing questions this week. And for this week's lineup, it's all in the air, but you will see me again. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.